Michael Bouchard and I was the NRT uh, special agent in charge at the Pentagon on 9-11. I was with ATF for about 15 years before 9-11. It involved uh, working with the FBI and some of the other agencies on logistics and how we were going to utilize resources from all the different agencies, <clears throat> explain to other agencies what our level of expertise was in processing a scene like that. And then also working closely with headquarters in the Washington Field Division on scheduling people <clears throat> to get them in from uh, other teams, uh, other uh, areas of the country, um, and all the other logistics that go along with bringing like, roughly 100 plus people into the area. Yeah, I'd been a member of the NRT both as a, a, a team member and a supervisor <clears throat> for a number of years and processed a lot of different scenes. <clears throat> and the, the biggest difference with this one was the magnitude. And to see, you know, the attack on the country and um, just the, the look on people's faces like, you know, how did this ever happen to us in this country uh, made this one a lot different than any other scene we've worked. We gathered uh, late on 9-11, uh, and we had to wait for the authorization from the FBI to bring our teams in on um, September 12th. And at that time, we had the uh, Southeast team. Most of the people drove in. We all met out in Manassas, Virginia that evening. But um, as far as processing a scene like that, everybody was confident this was not going to be a, a tough scene to process. We already knew basically what happened. Um, it was just going to be about a reconstructing some things. You know, the NRT trains in, in real-life training, not just uh, you know, classroom training or scenario training. They've learned on the job. <clears throat> They've learned from small fires, which is, helps them be able to do large fires. They've seen small explosions, which helps them uh, figure out what happened in, in larger types of explosions. Um, I spoke with the FBI and some other agencies, and they expected this scene, in their words, this is going to take us three to four months to process this scene. And we convinced them, the team, uh, supervisors and myself, we've got some expertise here. Let us explain um, how to process this scene. And then after a short time with some phone calls, they realized that we could add some value. And they listened to us. And we were completed with this scene in 19 days. And 184 of the 189 victims uh, were later identified. Within a few hours, of uh, us working at the scene, uh, we were asked, how many more people can you bring in <clears throat> with this level of expertise? What you saw today, um, you're never gonna forget, but let it go. Um, a lot of them didn't wanna stop working at, at the end of their 12-hour shifts. You know, we had to force them to take a break. Let it go, talk to each other about it, um, get your head straight, and if at any point this gets to be too much for any of you, you need to tell us. Um, and that was one of the things that the team supervisors and myself watched everybody closely. And you could see um, the looks on their faces at the end of the day and all the outpouring for, of, of people. I lived locally, riding home. There were signs hanging over the highways, people out with flags, you know, thanking you all around, you know, thanking all the workers there. Um, you know, that was really something to see and, and something that none of us will ever forget.